Welcome to the database world. My name is Jant Mahato and I am product manager in Oracle database team. Our topic today is tips and tricks, data warehousing with data from Oracle eBusiness Suite and SaaS. In this session, we are going to learn how to load your data warehouse using Oracle Data Integrator Web Edition. This data integration tool, ODI Web Edition, is available for Oracle Autonomous Database users. I will also go through a short demo at the end where I will show how you can connect to Fusion SaaS and extract data for loading to your data warehouse. ODI Web Edition makes it super easy to do so. Let's start with the basics of data integration. If you are working with data warehousing, then this will be familiar to you, but it doesn't hurt to re-emphasize the basics. Various transaction applications, such as Oracle EBS, Fusion SaaS, third-party apps, generate lots of data. This data is a valuable asset for a data-driven enterprise. However, it is hard and often not very optimal to make use of data at the source. The data needs to be transported to the target where it can be transformed. Transformations involve joining data coming from various sources to give a complete picture and loading into a target data model, which is much better suited for deriving intelligence from the data. It often involves loading into a data warehouse. Now let me introduce you to Oracle Data Integrated Web Edition. This is a simple drag and drop data load tool. Even for a complex data sources such as Fusion SaaS, you just simply drag the source data entity into the design canvas and build a data flow without needing to know the complex details of how data is being extracted from the source. It supports all kinds of transformations, including the ones for data quality to be used in data flow. It is based on Oracle Data Integrator, which has been a mature data integration tool from Oracle for thousands of customers worldwide. It uses the same ELT, extract, load, and transform architecture of ODI that leverages the database server for doing the transformation. It is a highly performance tool for bulk data, bulk data load and transformations, very well suited for data warehousing. It is also built in Oracle Data Autonomous Database tools for easy availability with no extra cost. I'll use this tool in the demo. A data integration tool needs to have a wide range of connectivity to data sources and targets. ODI Web Edition can connect to various applications such as Oracle Fusion SaaS, Oracle Marketing Cloud, Sales Cloud, Service Cloud, EBS, NetSuite, and even third-party applications such as Salesforce, Microsoft Dynamics, Google Analytics, and much more. Same with databases. ODI Web Edition can connect to Oracle and non-Oracle databases. This list is not complete. You can refer to the documentation for the complete list. Also note that this connectivity can be further extended by using third-party JDBC drivers. Let's look at various use cases for ODI Web Edition. First use case is modernizing infrastructure. To reduce costs and improve manageability, customers may decide to move the data from a legacy data sources to a modern database, such as Oracle Autonomous Database. ODI Web Edition can help in this heterogeneous data migration. Second use case is improved analytics. If customers want to use latest analytical applications such as OSC or Kinetics Cloud, then it is best to move data from legacy sources to database where it can be analyzed using these applications. Again, this data movement and transformations can be done using ODI Web Edition. Third use case is data warehousing, which is topic of today's discussion. It could also use a modern database such as Oracle Autonomous Database or a classic Oracle database for data warehouse and data sources can be anywhere. With a good range of heterogeneous connectivity and transformations capability available in ODI Web, it is very well suited for this kind of use case. We will see this in the short demo at the end. Now let's look at the details. First part is connecting to the data sources. Connection to data source, connection to source database is generally straightforward, where one connects using database driver and can read the source tables. However, reading from application is entirely different matter. Some of the applications do not allow outside process, uh, processes to access data directly. There is also a logical data model on top of the underlying physical model, and it makes sense to access the application data from the logical model. This logical model conforms to various application entities, such as customers, invoices, payments, etc. If direct data access is not available, then we need to use the data export tools supported by the application. These export tools are designed for bulk data export and often have incremental data extract capabilities. In case of Fusion SaaS, we need to use Business Intelligence Cloud Connector, in short, BICC, for data extract. This is the supported data extraction mechanism. In our demo, we will see how to use this for extracting data from Fusion SaaS. 
for some applications uh, application sources we need application specific jdbc driver these drivers gives access to application layer for reading from and sometimes even writing to applications and lastly sometimes direct connection to physical database is the best way to extract data this is how it is for oracle ebs this is the simplest way to connect and extract since there are different ways to connect and extract application data ODI Brevidison hides all this complexity and provides a common interface for all data sources. Data warehouse users simply focus on how to transform the data for their target data model and not worry about the connection and extraction details. In our demo, we will see how we can use BICC for reading Fusion SAS data. Another consideration is incremental data extract. Most of the times, application data sources allow use of last updated column to identify incremental data since last extract and limit the incoming data volume so that nightly load or whatever load frequency is can be optimal. In some cases, the last update data is not available or not reliable, then one has to use some other method to identify incremental data. One can be tempted to use database triggers on the source to do so. And in theory, it works, but it is not very optimal. Better strategy is to use some form of lock-based capture, which doesn't impact the source application. This is a sophisticated strategy and specialized tools are needed Oracle has Golden Gate product, which is industry leader for such extract. It is a real-time heterogeneous replication tool. ODI Web Edition integrates with Oracle Golden Gate. After the data extract, one has to transform the data and load into the target data model. Data warehouses generally use a dimensional model of facts and dimension in a star schema. Data is also denormalized and aggregated as necessary. Transformations in the data flow can be quite complex, involving joins, lookups, and strategy to load incremental data. ODI Web Edition provides a rich selection of transformation tools in a simple drag and drop interface. In the demo, we'll connect to Fusion SaaS using BICC, reverse engineer the entities, and build a workflow to schedule data, data warehouse data load. Now let's jump to the demo. We start with the database actions menu of autonomous database. In the data tools menu, we can see the data transforms card I have already deployed ODI Web Edition before this demo, and that's why this data transforms card is appearing in my menu. And I'm going to use this data transforms tool for creating data flows to load my data warehouse. Before we create any data flow to load data to our data warehouse, we have to create the connections. Now we go to the connections menu, and I can see the three connections I have already defined one to Oracle EBS CRM, which is essentially a database connection, then uh, Fusion SaaS connections using the ICC connector, and the connection to our data warehouse, which is a connection to Oracle Autonomous Database. For this demo, we are going to use the Fusion connection and the data warehouse connection. If you have to create a connect new connection, then you can go to the Create Connection menu, and you can see the various databases which are available to you, and also various applications which you can source data from. You can see that we have a BICC connectors, we have connectors to Oracle Sales Cloud, Microsoft Dynamics, a lot of other applications, Oracle EBS, Marketing Cloud, etc. For our purpose, we are going to use this Oracle BICC Cloud Connector. And this is a special collector, connector because it connects to the BICC server, which is running as part of the application. And BICC is the responsible for exporting data from Fusion SAS and exporting into the object store. So if I go to this connection, you can see that various connection parameters for BICC. We have to provide the BICC server URL, user ID, passwords, etc., and also the storage where BICC exports data to. I have already created this Fusion BICC connections. And we can test the connection, and the connection is successful, and you are, are good to go. Now, before we start writing the data flows, we have to import the data entities. And this is the reverse ending process. Now, for importing data entity, you choose a connection to this uh, Fusion BICC connection. And we select the particular schema. And within the schema, we select various, we can select various offerings. Yeah, various offerings available. We are going to use only the financial uh, offering. 
just for the demo. And you can also use the mask to restrict the entities even further. In our case, we are going to select um, percentage so that we are going to get all the data entities in financial offering. Now, when you start the job, job starts running in the background and um, it starts importing that entities which are there in this particular offering of uh, Fusion SaaS. And when it's doing that, you can go and uh, query uh, using this filter. Uh, you can see the customer account has been imported. You can look for some other entities as well. Like in this case, you are looking at the invoice headers and you can see the invoice header entities are available to you. You can also see the various attributes within a particular entity. Similarly, you can um, import from uh, other connections like data warehouse. In this case, we have um, a fact and dimension available. This is an invoice fact, which I have created beforehand and the dimension. And we'll be loading this facts and dimension from the data from Fusion SAS in this demo. Again, you can see the attributes in this customer dimensions, which will be loaded from um, the source uh, coming from Fusion SAS. Now we need to create a project. That's where we'll be de defining the data flows. We'll call this load data warehouse project. And in the load data warehouse project, we'll be creating data flows for loading the dimension. And after that, loading the fact. So let's create the first data flow. This data flow will be for uh, loading the dimension. And we are selecting the scheme, uh, connections which will be uh, we will be using in this data flow. So certainly Fusion SAS is one of the connections for sources, and we are going to add a connection to a data warehouse. That's where our um, uh, target table is, which is the dimension table. Now, customer using customer account as a source, we'll um, select that and we'll drag it into the canvas. This will become our source. And we can do um, various transformations to this data. In this case, we are doing a very simple one, which is filtering. What we are doing is that we are going to filter the active customers using the status. So wherever customer status is equal to A, we are going to filter that and uh, reject the remaining uh, customer accounts. And this could be as complicated as possible. Um, and uh, you can see that there are various transforms available on the top in the tools menu. For this demo, we are going to do only simple uh, transformations. Now we are going to find the duct dimension and we are going to join this so that the customer dimension is loaded uh, from the data which is coming from the filter. And after saving it, we can uh, again uh, look at uh, this data flow. And you can see the data flow, uh, data, data has been transformed from customer account to this filter to the target. And if I click on the transfer icon, you can see the various options are available for BICC job. Now here we have made it very easy for the end user. They, they don't have to know the complexity of the BICC. They can simply um, choose various options. And these are the options for the target table. You can see the append and incremental mode you can choose whichever, whichever you want, and you can start the data flow. Now the job has been started, and once the job completes, you can look at the data which is loaded into the target dimension table. And we had, remember we had filtered for um, active, you can see the data which is loaded is only for um, active A status. You can also uh, look at the various stats uh, for this table, which are available to you. Now the dimension has been loaded. Now our next job is to load the fact table. Again, we are creating a new data flow for loading the invoice fact table. And in the, just like we did before, we are selecting the connection. Fusion BICC is the connection source connection. And we have to um, uh, bring in the target connection, which is data warehouse connection. That's where our fact table is. 
This time, our source is going to be the invoice header. Can we drag it into the canvas? And this time, we need more than one source. We need to do a certain kind of lookup to uh, look up for the dimension IDs before we load to, load to the um, target table. So in this case, we bring in the dimension as, also as a source, which we had loaded before. And invoice fact table will become our target table. Now this time, we'll build again a data flow using various transforms from the tools menu. Now the um, invoice table becomes a driving source and lookup table is the customer dimension. And we will simply look, we are looking for the IDs for any party IDs which are coming uh, from the invoice header. We have to provide the lookup condition. Where account name is going to be equal to the party ID from the invoice header. Party name. And now we will join the, it to the target table. Again, this is a very simple um, data flow. It could be more complicated depending on uh, what kind of logic you want. The color, in, if you look at the column mappings, these are automatically mapped, but there are some columns which are still unmapped and you can go ahead and map them manually. In this case, invoice ID is going to the INV ID column and the party ID is going to be um, uh, populated by the our lookup which are, which we did which brings in the party id again you have various options to load the target table and after saving it you can start the job now this job is running and it will come it's completed you can see the status Just look at the data which is being loaded. And if you want to know the details of the job, then you can click on the job and you can look at the various steps. This is more for debugging purposes. And you just generally don't care about this. You can see the um, 40,000 rows have been inserted in your targets and you can get more details on um, uh, the job for your debugging purposes. Now the data flow is created. Now we'll, we are going to create a workflow for daily loads and we'll call it a daily load with data warehouse workflow. And we are going to bring in both this customer dimension and invoice fact table in that workflow. And there is also some kind of error control here. If any one of them fail, then we can run this data flow called run if error. So you have some control on how you want to execute this uh, these steps. Again, after saving it, you could execute it now or you can create a schedule. In our case, we are going to create a schedule so that the schedule can be run nightly. By giving it a name called nightly load schedule and picking a workflow, the, this is a workflow we created and we'll run this thing daily at particular time of our choosing, in this case, 1 a.m. Now this schedule has been saved and we can, uh, this uh, load will be running nightly at 1 a.m. every day. In this demo, we saw how easy it was to load data from Fusion SAS to uh, your data warehouse and loading from other sources like Oracle EBS, the same concept applies. You create a connection to Oracle EBS and uh, reverse engineer the data entities and create the data flows. For more information, there are a couple of links. For getting a first-hand experience with ODI Web Edition, we have Live Labs. To know more about autonomous database tools, you have the link here as well. This concludes our session today. Thank you.